Well, I have rebuilt the experimental uh, resonator. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> As you can see, we're using RG6 or RG8 coax, sorry, as the main outer conductor. I have tied the ends together. Oops, down here and connected them directly to the capacitor. So the ends of the shield and the uh, center conductor are tied together to make that coax one big conductor. Up in the middle here I've got a copper, 3 8 inch copper pipe that I've uh, formed to make the uh, coupling, in, or the primary, the uh, driven uh, side of the uh, air core transformer inductor. And uh, I've been experimenting with uh, tuning it and transmitting. It's broadcasting whisper right now. And uh, one interesting thing about this, using my field strength meter, um, if we get close to the uh, coil, we see up at the end here we have full scale. As I move down, we get a lull or null right about where the primary is. And then further down, we're out to full scale again towards the end. And I'll move back from it a, about a foot. And you can see, well, it's a little less pronounced out here. Still just a little bit of a lull towards the middle. Oh, there the transmission stopped. So it's an interesting experiment to uh, map out the magnetic field or, or electrical field around an inductor. Um, it uh, is not receiving all that well, and it's not transmitting all that well. And, uh, well, it is an inductor. Now, Greg, over at the Hammond Shortwave channel, which is a great YouTube channel, by the way, I'm going to link his channel in the description down below. I'd encourage everybody to visit it. He's got some great videos. Um, he commented on the first video with an explanation of leakage in inductors. And what we're seeing as far as radiation is actually leakage the adjacent windings in a coil interact with each other. The greater that space between the windings, the greater the amount of leakage that you get of the electrical field out from the inductor. That's what's actually radiating. Now, in a big magnetic loop design, that outer inductor is one open turn. So there is no adjacent turns to interact with each other and so it kind of makes sense that the reason that that thing radiates so well is it's all leakage. Um, there's no adjacent turns to interact with each other and absorb the energy. And so the energy just leaks out. And so it radiates really well. Whereas a large inductor like this, we have adjacent turns to interact with each other and absorb the energy that's being produced. And it doesn't leak out. It doesn't radiate. So, as it is, it's not that great of an antenna. I mean, it does work, but just not very efficiently at all. However, as I pointed out with the field strength meter, we have a strong leakage or field up here. We have a, a lull, a null, right around the driven element, which is interesting because that's where the energy is coming from. You figure it would be stronger there, but it isn't. It just dips right down, and then it comes out really strong at the ends. Now the way I built this, there's uh, screw holes here between each of the uh, windings. So I can easily take this driven element, unscrew it here, remove the wire, move it up to this end or down to that end and reattach it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this down here to the, this end of the inductor nearest the capacitor remount it, retap it with a, with a shorter coax run to the connector, and then I'm going to hook it back up and I'm going to measure the field again with the field strength meter, and I think what will happen is we'll have a huge amount of leakage at the top and almost none down here. So that should improve its efficiency as an antenna um, quite a bit, and we're going to test that and find out. Uh, the other thing I want to try just for grins and giggles, I've got an old telescopic whip that's about 50 inches long. I'm going to extend that and I'm going to drop it down inside of here so that it's sitting inside this coil and uh, see if the coil couples to it and makes it a radiator. 
and then see how it uh, behaves. You know, it still might be a useful compact antenna if all you had to do is just drop a metal pipe down in the middle of it to make your radiator. <laughs> we'll see. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do this morning. There we go. It was easy. That took me about uh, 10 minutes. So now the uh, primary is at the bottom of the inductor. See that? And uh, Whisper is about to start transmitting in uh, 20 seconds. So we'll be able to measure it. The tuning was not affected. Shifting this down to the bottom uh, made no difference on where I had to tune the capacitor to resonate on a specific band. So that's interesting. Uh, apparently the position of the uh, primary is not going to make a difference on tuning. The question is, what about the radiated field? Will it be stronger? Let me grab my uh, trusty little field strength meter here. And in about uh, five seconds it's going to go into transmit mode and we'll find out. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. And transmit. All right. So, like before, okay, the field is very strong at the top. Stays strong all the way down. Uh, there's no lull now. There's no null at all. How far away can I get? Let's see, a foot away, I'm getting a stronger meter deflection. And it's a little bit stronger near the bottom. Interesting. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. Uh, we got more radiation. It's a stronger field by far. I noticed right away that the uh, static level on the receiver was higher. Instead of a uh, uh, about an S2 static, I was getting an S8. And that's with the uh, preamp in, uh, activated on the uh, 817. So, it definitely is acting more like an antenna. It's more sensitive. We'll have to let the whisper broadcast finish and see if I'm picked up anywhere. Now 20 meters is still kind of quiet this morning. It's a bit early. I'll have to do some more whisper tests to see if it's radiating any better. Um, I was not being heard at 500 milliwatts uh, with that primary in the middle of the coil. Uh, I did several transmissions last night on 40 meters and on 20. I was hearing stations as far away as California. I mean, it was, it was picking them up. Not as sensitive as my dipole by far. The big three-foot magnetic loop here in the house performs about as well as my 20 meter dipole in the attic on 20 meters. So it, it does surprisingly well. Uh, this was not performing well at all with that primary in the middle. With it near the bottom, it's hearing a lot better. We'll have to see if it's getting picked up. The other thing I'm going to try is I have a uh, telescopic whip. So I'm going to extend that and I'm going to drop it down in the middle of this thing for the next transmission and we'll see if it's uh, if it improves it at all. Alrighty, I've got this whip just sitting in there. It goes down in the middle of the coil. Uh, it sits on a piece of wood that's uh, coming up about that far. So it's sitting within the main part of the coil. The uh, field strength meter, about a foot away again. We still see about the same field from the coil. But it doesn't drop off. It continues up where the whip is. So the whip is coupling. And if I get close to the whip, you can see the meter goes up to full scale. So it's, uh, it's radiating. So as expected, it's coupling to it. That's good. Now we're getting a bit of a null again right in the middle. The tuning didn't change which was interesting. So this might be an interesting way of coupling to another radiator. Loose coupling to a radiator. Of course that's been done. <clears throat> if it was electrically connected at the top this would be a loading coil. <laughs> so uh, the experiments continue. I'm going to do some whisper broadcasting once the bands open up and I can do some comparative stuff and we will end the video with a summary of how this performs compared to that. And it's not going to be as good, but it certainly has been a fun experiment, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed the <laughs> following along with it. Uh, specs, in case you want to duplicate it, uh, this is a 2-inch inner diameter piece of PVC pipe. 
Yeah, I know. Two inches U.S. You know, you have to figure it out for your uh, European viewers. You'll have to do your own conversion. Um, I've got ten turns of RG8 coax with the shield and end and inner conductor joined to make a solid conductor. Evenly spaced out. Uh, the spacing is about uh, a little more than an inch, about an inch and a quarter between the turns. And then I've got uh, two turns of copper interlaced within, so the ratio is, is one-fifth, ten to, to two. Ten turns, two turns. And that capacitor uh, varies from about 50 picofarads when it's open to about 500 when it's fully meshed. So it's a pretty broad range cap. Um, so that's the specs if you want to build your own to play around and experiment yourself. Okay, what follows will be the results of my uh, testing as far as performance. So there you go, my experiments with the uh, inductor, the resonator, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, but that's, you know, what ham radio is about, experimenting, getting an idea, trying it, building it, seeing what happens. And in this case, it's just not very efficient at all. But it was fun, you know, it was interesting to build, looks kind of cool, and I might still play around with it some more. I've got some other ideas. I might uh, reduce the number of windings, uh, maybe by half to five and increase the distance between them by double, you know, so that they're even further spaced apart and see if it radiates any more efficiently that way. Um, if, you know, that bears fruit, I might do a third video uh, showing the final result if it uh, turns out to actually be useful and uh, do well enough to uh, make contacts with and, and use. It would be an interesting uh, apartment antenna, stick, uh, stick it up in a window, you know. Um, not very big, it could be made compact enough to, you know, tuck in a closet when you're not using it, bring it out when you need it. So, you know, it still might have some, there still might be something there. I don't know. But it's been fun uh, trying it out, and uh, I'm glad that uh, you were able to follow along, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, process. And uh, maybe you learned something, maybe not. Uh, maybe I just entertained you. Maybe not. Hopefully I did. So, that was it. That was the experiments uh, with the resonator. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.